promised, I'm back here today to share with you all the foundation of my complete 2016 planner system. Um, these are all the planners that I'm planning to use to help keep myself organized in 2016. Um, I mean, to be honest, even to me, this seems like an excessive amount of planners. And to be fair, I don't use every single planner every single day. I use different planners for different purposes, so they each have... They each have their purpose in my system and I'll go over a little bit more about what each planner's purpose is once I kind of dive into this video. But before we get started, there were two things that I wanted to quickly touch on with you guys. First of all, this is the very first video that I have filmed since I officially reached over a thousand subscribers on YouTube and I just wanted to say a really quick thank you. I mean, I can't even express how grateful I am for all your support and your excitement over my videos that I've been sharing. I really can't believe how quickly um, this little family on my YouTube channel has grown and I love each and every one of you so much. Your comments and your support just completely makes my day every single time and, and I am just so grateful that you have chosen to subscribe and kind of follow along with what I choose to share. And the second thing is I wanted to quickly explain why I am actually wearing my engagement ring on my right hand during this video. I know if I was watching someone else's uh, YouTube video and I saw that I would be so confused and I, would, I wouldn't be able to stop thinking about it until I found out why. So I kind of wanted to quickly explain that before we got started. Um, we recently figured out that my ring is actually a quarter size too small. Right now I believe it's a three and three quarter size and Normally I am a size four. We had thought that the three and three quarter size that this ring is would work, but um, in the last couple of weeks, my finger has started to get a little calloused on the side and swelled up a little bit. And so this the ring won't fit on this finger anymore. And I am now under strict orders from my jeweler to not put it on my left finger until for about a month so that the swelling can go down and we can get a accurate resizing measurement for when we do resize my ring in about a month. So <laughs> that is why my engagement ring is on my right hand. I know it's a little weird, but I would rather wear it on the wrong hand than not be able to wear it at all for a month. So there you have it. <laughs> okay, so back to the 2016 planner system tour. I am going to go through each one of these planners one by one and kind of share exactly what their use is and, you know, how I use it and give you a quick little flip through of each planner so you can see what I have inside each of them and give you a quick little flip through of each planner to give you an idea of what each of them holds. The first planner I'm going to show you guys you probably are pretty familiar with at this point. Um, I recently got my very first Kiki K planner for Christmas this past year and I shared that in my Christmas haul as well as an initial Kiki K um, review flip through type video um, both of which I'll leave up in the cards and I'll link below for you guys. Um, this is my everyday general basic planner that I keep out on my desk. It helps me with um, my daily to-do lists and things I need access to kind of on a regular basis. Previously, a lot of what's currently in this planner was in my, um, I guess, I think it's a medium-sized or small-sized Martha Stewart disc-bound planner, but I moved most of the contents into here for this year because I wanted to use this. <laughs> So opening up, here's what you see. I still haven't fully set up this planner, but I still wanted to kind of go through and show you what I have managed to set up and kind of where I'm at with this planner at this point. I'm planning on doing a full setup video once I get everything, you know, fully set up, fully, you know, decorated and whatnot in the future. But um, since I'm not sure how long that's going to take, it's not a super high priority for me right now as far as setting up further other than you know the necessities that are already in here. So that's why I didn't wait to fully set this up to film this video because I did want to get this filmed for you guys. So as you can see the front pockets are still pretty much blank except for the two little notebooks that came in there. Um, I don't currently really use these but I just kept them in there because they came there. And then behind this big flap I do have this um, notes page which I kind of outlined the plan that I have for this planner and so I listed out the sections I knew I wanted to include and then I kind of jotted down a couple notes about exactly what I wanted to include in each section to kind of give myself um, 
an idea, an overview of what I want to do with this planner and to get all of my thoughts on the paper and just to help myself get organized as I set up this new planner. And so for right now, I keep this list tucked back behind here because I actually don't have my tabs labeled at this point. And so I have the sections written down in the order that they are set up in the planner. And so if I ever forget, you know, where a specific section that I'm looking for is, I can just peek in there. I have it written down in order down there so I can see, you know, easily where, you know, say my list section is number two and I can flip there easily. And just until, I'm not sure if I am going to label the dividers because I may want to kind of reorganize in the future, but until I either memorize them or label them, I wanted to have a quick, easy reference to know which divider is which. So actually I'm gonna keep this out while I'm walking you through the planner so I can easily tell you guys which divider is which because <laughs> I still don't have that memorized. So up at the front, I have the stickers that came with the planner. I haven't used any of them, but I just wanted to keep them in here. Um, I'm not sure if I will use them. They're cute, but I don't really do a whole lot of decorating or, you know, sticker using in this planner. It's almost exclusively pen. So, I don't know. They're there if I need them, but so far I haven't. And then the first section is my daily section. And so as you can see, I have this cute little um, paper clip up here uh, that came in one of my Planner Addict box subscription boxes. And it is connected to the divider itself and then holds all the kind of previous pages so that I can easily, using the tab, flip right to today's to-do list. This makes it so much easier. I've been using this system for a couple of years now and I just absolutely love it. I don't have to, you know, flip through all the pages to find my to-do list. I can just, you know, one flip and I'm right there. And so the inserts I'm using in my daily section at the moment are new inserts that I made myself. Um, I, I'm really liking these new inserts. My old ones didn't really fit the way I was planning. And so when I redesigned these, I kind of tried to keep the way I planned in mind um, to make sure that they work for me and my system. So the way I have them set up is three to-do boxes divided by these little dotted borders. And inside I have five hearts to do, um, you know, checklists. And I break them down into different sections of my to-do list. These are kind of personal and home to-dos, these are my Etsy to-dos, and these are my blog and YouTube to-dos. And so this just gives me a nice at-a-glance um, look at what I need to do for each main section of my life every single day. And it helps me from being overwhelmed by just looking at one giant list of things I need to do. It kind of breaks it down so I can see, oh, I only have two things to do for the blog today. And so, you know, when I finish those two, I can feel more accomplished because I have an entire section done. And so I've been using these for a little over a month now and I am just, I'm really loving them. I like the cute design that also really <laughs> makes me want to use them and makes me happy whenever I look at them. Um, it's, you know, little things like that that makes me enjoy planning. And they've just really been working for my system. I have a little place down here at the bottom for any notes I might have that I need to jot down throughout the day. If I make an appointment, if I need to remember to, you know, add something into my planner later or any, just any notes I need. I also have a place to write down the date up at the top. And those have been my daily planning pages. Okay, my next section is my list section. And the first thing you see is this little additional divider thing from Pell Studio. Um, I'm not gonna lie, when I first got it, I had absolutely no idea what it was and how to use it. And it actually clips into the binder rings like this. I'm not sure you can see it since it's clear. You can kind of see it, I think, against the pink there. But there are these little um, teeth that kind of fit right into your binder rings. And I thought it was cute with the little hearts, which kind of matched my new insert theme. And so I wanted to put that in there to easily mark my master to-do list in case this is ever, you know, not the first thing in the section. But anyways, um, this section is for all of my lists, as you might have guessed. Um, first of all, there's my master to-do list, which has everything that I need to do that I don't want to necessarily do that day. So if it's something I think of like, oh yeah, I need to do that, like, you know, updating my driver's license address, I'll put it on my master to-do list. And then as I'm planning out my weeks, I'll refer to this and then add in tasks to my weekly plan as 
is as is necessary. <laughs> and so these can be kind of long-term project things. They can be things that don't necessarily have a timed deadline. They're pretty much just anything. It's just a dumping grounds for any to-dos that I think of that I don't want to put right onto my daily pages. And so besides my master to-do list, I have a bunch of other lists in here. I have a general wish list. I have an Etsy wish list, a beauty wish list, a skincare wish list, wish list um, shows to watch, and movies to watch. And so all of them aren't fully filled out. I need to go back and add in a couple more things to each list, but it's kind of just, I wanted to have the base down so that when I do think of something, I have somewhere immediately to put, you know, oh, I do want to see that movie, and so I don't forget about it, I can just put it right on this list. So I really like having all of these lists kind of ready as I need them. And if I think of a new list that I may want to keep in my planner, um, I can just, you know, add in another one. Um, to make the titles of most of these lists, I used the Woo Woo Alpha stamp set from Studio L2E, which I will link below. And then I hand lettered um, some of the other, you know, the other titling with um, a Micron 01 pen. And again, um, I made these inserts myself to match my daily inserts. They have the little hearts as the checklists and the dotted border around the title. And I really like the design, how these turned out. Okay, and after my lists section, I have my finance section. And I have two types of inserts in here. The first is a bill tracker. And um, just like all my other inserts, I made these myself with the little hearts as the check boxes and the dotted kind of lining. So the way these inserts are set up, I have my bills listed down the left and then it's one full page or one A5 size page for a year. So I have January, February, March, April, May, June, and then July through December on the back of this page. And so each month I write in the, um, you know, say I have rent right here. I will write in how much is due uh, for the month of April. And then once that bill is paid, I'll just check it off. And so as you can see, I can see once, you know, all my bills have been paid for that month. And I really like this page just to kind of keep me on top of things. So at a glance, I can see and, you know, make sure, okay, we have paid everything this month and we're good to go until next month. And then after my bill tracker, I also have a debt tracker. I have one of these pages for every credit card that either Melissa or I have, and I just basically use it to kind of stay on top of our debt and kind of know where we're at with each credit card balance. And so um, the months of the year are listed down the left of the page, and then at the top I have columns for the start of the month, the interest, payment, and the end of the month. And so, for each month at the beginning I'll put the starting balance on you know say that credit card and then throughout the month once the interest charge hits I will write in how much interest was charged I'll also write in the amount of the payments that we've made throughout that month and then at the end of the month I will write the ending balance and so then the ending balance can go down to the start balance of the next month and I just I really like having this um, system to track any you know our debts and credit cards and stuff so I know how much balance we're carrying and so I have really been enjoying this system of keeping track of our credit cards okay and then next up is my notes section um, right now I don't have anything except notes pages in here I haven't used this section too much I do hope to start I don't know just using it to jot down things if I need to or I need scratch paper for a project or whatever I need paper for. I have some printed out in here and just ready to be used. And again, it's in that dotted and simple gray theme that I've made for the rest of my inserts. After my notes, I have my home section. And this is where I can keep everything related to our apartment or our home. This is one of my lesser setup sections. I definitely want to add a little more in here, but for now it just kind of holds some basic notes, a few lists I've jotted down. Um, in the next year, Melissa and I are actually planning on hopefully buying a house. And so we started kind of making a list of things that we would love to have in a house once we do buy. And so we just started making a list of things that we do want to look for in a house when we do start looking for a house. And so I have, you know, my wish list up here, Melissa's wish list down here. Some of them overlap, but just the different things that we would want in our dream house. <laughs> and then the next page is a things we need for the apartment list. And I find myself constantly kind of throughout the day going through 
my day and thinking, oh, we need to replace that or, oh, right, I do want to buy that. And then when it comes time to, I don't know, I guess buy new things for the apartment, I can never think of things that we do need. And so I wanted to have one place where I can just immediately write down anything that I think of that we need to buy for the apartment, like we need to replace our bathroom trash can. And so I really like having this here and ready for me to jot down things as I think of them. And after that, I have some notes on how to clean my Clarisonic. <laughs> I actually think I might move this to my last section, which I've recently decided to make a personal section. Right now it's empty, there's nothing behind there, and I've been using it as kind of a pull for when I close my planner so the pages don't bend in the rings. But I think I'm going to actually make that into a dedicated section and add something else behind there as a pull. But anyways, after my home section, I have a wedding section. And so while I do have dedicated wedding planners, I wanted a section in my everyday planner just for notes and random stuff. <laughs> um, I have another one of those kind of clear additional dividers in here that says love with two little hearts on the side. I thought that was cute. Um, I have a list of a couple products I was thinking about and I didn't want to forget um, that I was thinking about for buying for the wedding, just random stuff. And then I also have a wish list ready to go that I think I might transfer some of this stuff onto once I decide more concretely what I want. And then I have just some more regular notes pages in there. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll be using this for since, as I said, I have additional wedding specific planners, but I wanted to include it just in case it becomes useful. And if it's not, I can always change it into a different section very easily. And then like I previously said, this section is currently empty, but I'm thinking of turning it into a personal section. So having things like um, beauty care in here or um, so like, you know, face mask, DIY face mask recipes or such, or maybe some personal goal tracking. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but that's what I'm thinking at this moment. And I'll keep you guys updated whenever I do a complete Kiki K final setup tour video. <laughs> and so that's where I'm at with this planner. I'll definitely keep you guys updated like I said, but I hoped you liked getting kind of a first look into where I am at right now with this planner. Moving on, the next planner I wanted to show you is my personal Erin Condren life planner. And this is the life planner that I use for my personal um, monthly and weekly planning. So no business, just my schedule and personal home to-dos. So just like you saw on my last planner system tour, I have these adorable little planner charms from Kawaii Studios on this planner. I have a little Palmer clay star and acrylic Filofax charm. I just think they're cute and I really like having them on there. I found that they're super durable. I mean, I just bang them around all the time and they're, they're as good as new. And so I really like having them on there. I don't have to worry too much about moving my planner around and getting them dinged up. The cover of this planner is the honeycomb pattern. I forget which color I chose, but I'll try and leave it in the description box for you guys. And I have my name, Merit Elizabeth, on the front. And um, as always, I have a link in the description box like I do for all my videos. If you're new to Erin Condren and you make your first purchase using the link that I leave in the box, you will get um, $10 off your purchase as well as send me a $10 credit link. So if you're interested, it's there. <laughs> so opening up this planner, the first thing that I do use is this kind of year at a glance page and I use it to kind of plan out larger projects or goals that I wanna complete throughout the year and when I'm planning on tackling those goals. So for example, I am on a huge organization and decluttering kick right now and so I've assigned different rooms of our apartment to different months and so, you know, say it's February right now, we're focusing on the kitchen and so we are just getting rid of a ton of stuff in the kitchen that we don't need, don't use, and then at the end of the month, if I'm done, I can you know, check it off. I currently only have the first four months kind of planned out, but as the year moves on and I think of more projects that I wanna tackle, I will kind of fill in the rest of the months. The next section of this planner that I use are the monthly calendars, and I am a very light monthly planner. The only things that I really plan out are bills, holidays, any like large events or vacations, and then um, I've started recently to do some monthly goal tracking. And so I've been playing around with adding different, you know, goals that I want to accomplish in the month over on the right 
sidebar but for the most part this is all I do for monthly planning it's very simple it allows the big things to stand out and it has worked for years for me so I don't think I'll be changing this anytime soon and then I do the bulk of my planning back in the weekly pages and so the amount of planning I do in here actually varies I have found recently that I just I simply don't have time every single week to full out you know, plan and decorate and fill up the entire page with stickers and, you know, whatnot. So, for example, this week, all I have is some to-do lists at the top and then a couple stickers down at the bottom of each day showing if we have any, you know, pre-planned events or anything. Um, and then throughout the week, if we do anything else, I will fill in, you know, with a sticker here or there if we go somewhere or anything like I did on Monday. And so, on busier weeks, this is all that happens. Um... I wish I had more time regularly to, you know, fully plan every single week like some girls do, but I've honestly stopped trying to, I've stopped beating myself up over it because at the end of the day, I get my planning done. I know what I need to do each day. I can record our activities since I also like to use my planners as kind of like a journal time capsule type of thing. So this works for me. And when I do have time, I do like to do, um, a little bit fuller weeks with a little more decoration down at the bottom but again sometimes I'll be able to decorate at the beginning of the week and then I'll be too busy to fill it in so you can see at the bottom I didn't check off if I did any of these routines so I don't know it's kind of I definitely haven't found full planner piece in this planner I have been playing around with different things sometimes I have sidebars sometimes I don't I'm gonna keep playing around in 2016 and see what works for me, but I know I definitely do love having these full box ombre heart checklists at the top for each um, day to have a little to-do list. And so I've really been liking that. And so that never changes. And then so what I do every day from here is um, when I'm planning out my day in my Kiki K daily pages, I will take out this planner. I will see, you know, whatever I have to do on that day and then take the tasks from this day or any uncompleted tasks from the previous days and put them into my daily planner in the top box which is you know my general tasks like I told you guys and so that system of also pulling out tasks from this planner and then I'll show you my um, business planner as well into my daily personal planner and my Kiki K has really been working for me so again I don't have to flip through multiple planners every day I can just have everything all on that one daily page showing me everything I need to do that day without, you know, flipping in and out of different planners. And so that pretty much finishes up what I use my personal Erin Condren life planner for. I have one more planner in my personal planning system for kind of non-business or non-specific, um, oops, there you go, <laughs> for kind of non-business stuff. So this is another just purely personal planner. This planner is by Blue Sky and they are a long time favorite planner brand for me. They were the planners that I were, that I was using before the planner community exploded. And so I've been using these for years, before I started decorating, before it became like a thing to plan. Blue Sky, they they were my deal. <laughs> and so I really like having one of their planners in my everyday system. In the spirit of full disclosure, I was sent this planner by Blue Sky for their new year new planner um, promotion, but this video is not sponsored by them. It's not, you know, I'm not being paid to share this with you. It's just part of my regular planning system and so I wanted to share that with you. Um, the cover is this really pretty robin's egg blue and then it has 2016 in like silver foiling on the front which I think is a really beautiful detail. And then on the inside it is this week on two page spread with the pretty you know pattern at the top that a lot of blue sky um, planners have. And then each day if you can see has lines. And so what I have been using this for is kind of a daily positivity and gratitude journal. So at the end of the day, after I've gotten ready for bed, um, I take out this journal and I write down anything that, you know, made me happy or that I was grateful for or something good that happened that day and I write it in that day's box. And I just, I really like having that as the last thing I do every day. I've wanted to start including um, a gratitude journal type thing into my planning system for quite a while. And so I'm really excited that I actually have worked this into my planning system this year. And I can't wait to have a full book full of positive thoughts by the end of the year to kind of look back on. And I'm really excited to have this, you know, full book of gratitude and positivity to look back on at the end of the year and see kind of, you know, 
how great things were this year. <laughs> oh, one more thing I didn't show you is that the spine actually has silver foiling on the edges of each page. How cool is that? I mean, I just think that is the neatest thing. It seems so fancy, but I, I think that's really cool and it matches the 2016 on the cover. <laughs> Okay, so next up we are going to go through my second Erin Condren Life Planner and this is actually my business Erin Condren Life Planner. And so this is the life planner that I use for both my Etsy shop, which is the Merit Elizabeth shop, and my blog and YouTube stuff, so label me Merit. And the cover is this fun confetti polka dot pattern thing and then I have again Merit Elizabeth up the side and I have a hot pink fluff um, tassel on the spine of my life planner, which I kind of double looped around sort of so that it wasn't hanging off so long because I like having it kind of in the middle like that and I really like, I don't know, I like how it is. And um, again, this also came in a planner addict box and I really, I like having it there. It's so soft. <laughs> but so then going inside this planner, again, the first thing I use in here is the year at a glance planner. So like with my personal planner at the beginning of the year, I kind of went through and basically planned out some big projects and different things that I wanted to do in the different months. Um, I actually do need to update this because a couple of things have gotten kind of moved around and rescheduled and so I want to kind of somehow update that to reflect that so I can keep up to date on my yearly goal planning. All right, and so the next thing I do in this planner is my monthly business planning. And I apologize for this whole section that has to be covered up. I have some financial information that I do in my, or I have some financial organization that I do in my monthly calendar. And so I just wanted to quickly cover that up for you guys. But again, just like in my personal Erin Condren life planner, I use these monthly pages very sparingly and I like to keep it very blank so that I can see the important things at a glance. For example, I have, you know, a Valentine's Day sale that I held in the Merit Elizabeth shop. I have any new releases that I put out in the shop. Um, I usually have marked down a blog posts or videos, but I actually didn't do that this month. I just, I guess I forgot. <laughs> and then some due dates for teams I'm on, like the Planner Attic Box or Studio L2E. And then finally over here, I have... Um, monthly goals for both Label Me Merit and the Merit Elizabeth shop. Okay, and so next up, I do my weekly planning again for my business in the weekly pages. I have been keeping this very simple. For a while, I was trying to, you know, both decorate my personal Erin Condren and my business Erin Condren, and it was just, it was way too much. Like I said, I sometimes don't even have time to decorate just my personal planner, and so decorating the business planner just had to go. And so basically what I do every week in here is stick down two sets of to-do lists, one for the shop, one for the blog and YouTube. And then recently I've also been planning some Instagram posts down at the bottom. I just wanted this system to be very meat and potatoes, just, you know, at a glance what I needed to do and that's it. I will also annotate any blog posts or releases that I do down at the bottom just to kind of, again, keep track. But yeah, it's a very simple system and it's been working for me. <laughs> and again, like I said, for my personal planner, any to-do list or any to-do items that I include in here every single day, I will open up my Kiki K to my daily planner and I will take to-do items out of here and put it into there so I only have to look at that one page. And so this is pretty much all the planning that I have been doing on a regular basis for my business. Um, I am going to show you both my blog and my Etsy planner, but to be honest, I haven't really been using those planners almost at all this year. And so, I mean, they are just begging to be updated and to have a brand new setup and to figure out what I need, what I don't need, and kind of just a complete revamp of both these planners. So for the sake of this video, I am going to walk you through and kind of show you what I am using and mention what I'm not using, but I am pretty much just going to skip over it so I don't, you know, waste your time. <laughs> if you would like to see a full walkthrough of um, either my Etsy planner or the blog planner, which I'll show you next, you can check out my old um, planner system tour video, which I'll leave in a card up here, and then I'll also link it in the description box. So if you're curious, that has a full walkthrough and we'll also link to specific blog posts for each of these planners as well. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. Um, I'm actually gonna zoom you out a little bit. Okay, so opening up this planner, the first thing you see is this. <laughs> um, normally I actually do have an additional page in the binder rings that has an outline schedule for the next 
uh, probably nine months of releases for the Mary Elizabeth shop. And so this just kind of helps me stay up to date and caught up with what I'm planning to release. And so I can, you know, make those files and whatnot. And then over here, I just have a bunch of random notes, post-it notes, such that I've scribbled down and I want to kind of keep. And so I just corral them all in here until I can kind of get them moved into the rest of the planner, which I am planning to do at some point. And then moving into the bulk of the planner, the only section I've been using is the financial section. And I'm not gonna flip to it because for obvious reasons and there's just too much to cover up, I wouldn't be able to really show you anything. But I do have, um, I can tell you what I have in there. I have a list of expenses so I can write down anytime I, you know, buy supplies for the shop or spend any sort of money towards the business I record it there and then I also have an income tracker so you know when I earn income <laughs> and so I have been keeping up with those two inserts in here and I think it's time to kind of update that system I know the inserts I'm using I definitely want to update they're very old and I don't really like how they're laid out at this point so those will be getting a facelift but I, I don't know, as far as the rest of the planner, I'm going to be taking a majority of it out because of the monthly and weekly planning and pretty much the to-do section I'm all doing in my Erin Condren. And it just, I, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this planner yet, but it will definitely be made over. And so once I do get around to kind of completely revamping my Etsy planner, I will most definitely share a video and a blog post with you guys on the brand new setup and how I'm using that. But for now, that's it. That's the only thing I've been using that for. <laughs> um, next up, I have is my blog planner, which again, I'm not really using pretty much at all. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm doing all my monthly and weekly and such planning in my business life planner. And so this has pretty much gotten neglected. Okay, so this is what you first see when you open up this planner. The left side with the pockets and stuff is pretty much completely empty. I have some random notes in there. Honestly, I probably haven't even looked at them in over a year. They can probably get thrown away. <laughs> um, then I have some goals for 2015. Again, I'm going to take this out. They're old. I don't need that. <laughs> and in here is um, kind of a, a list that I made of things I needed to do for each blog post when I moved over from Blogger to WordPress. I'm still kind of working on a couple of those things, so I'm going to keep that in here. And then the pages that just came in here. And... Again, I, let's see. Yeah, I haven't been using anything except the financial section, which is pretty similar to the inserts that I have in my Etsy planner, but it also has a section to record um, AdSense income per month as well as uh, Amazon affiliate income per month. And so I like to keep track of those and see how they're doing. So I have inserts for those in there. And then I also have an income tracker like in the Etsy planner. But yeah, other than that, I really honestly haven't touched this planner in months. And so it is again in desperate need of an overhaul and a reset up. So once I get time to do that, again, I'll film a video and share my new blog planner setup with you guys. Until then, this is what I have. <laughs> And um, same with the Etsy planner, there is a more thorough walkthrough of this planner if you're interested in my old complete planner system tour video. And so, yeah, if you want to check that out, the links will be in the info bar or in the, um, yeah, info box thing in the cards <laughs> and in the info box below. All right, and so the last couple of planners are my wedding planners, which are, I mean, obviously new this year. This is the year that we're gonna do the bulk of the wedding planning. Melissa and I did get engaged last November and we are getting married next spring. And so 2016 is, you know, when all the magic's gonna happen. <laughs> I currently have two planners in my wedding planning system that I wanted to quickly go over with you guys um, in this video. I'm still working out the kinks on how exactly I want my wedding planning system set up. And so once I do, kind of figure everything out. I do plan on making a video walking you through that, you know, my wedding planning system. But for now, I wanted to give you a peek at what I'm using and how I'm using it at the moment. I'm kind of building my system as I go. So what I'm showing you today is kind of what I have at the moment. <laughs> so uh, the first planner I'm using is this adorable little blush pink um, monthly and weekly planner from Sugar Paper 
It's the sugar paper with blue sky at target line. <laughs> and I have this as well as the folio and a document file thing all in this same kind of blush faux leather pattern. And I'm using all of those for my wedding planning. And I just, I think it's gorgeous. I love sugar paper. Like I said, I love blue sky. So I love this planner. <laughs> and so at the moment, since um, most of what we're doing right now is kind of inspiration planning and we haven't, you know, met with any vendors yet and started to do any real planning, um, I've been using this kind of as a journal memory keeper type of planner. And so the first thing I have been filling out is the monthly planner. And like my other monthly calendars, I kept it pretty simple and blank and only put in kind of important wedding related activities that I wanted to remember. So, um, well, clearly this was the first Valentine's that we celebrated as an engaged couple. And then we actually celebrated by going registry shopping at the mall. And so I wanted to mark that because that was really fun. And then we also went wedding band shopping on that Monday. And so just kind of big, important events that I might want to look back on, you know, remember. <laughs> and so that's what I've been using my monthly calendar for. And then the, oops. So, and then the weekly pages, again, they're lined. And so I've been using them to kind of write out more detailed memories um, about, you know, anything having to do with wedding planning. So whether I saw, you know, the perfect venue on Pinterest or if I decided I really wanted to do something specific for our invitations, I can jot down notes, I can jot down memories. Like for example, when we went um, wedding band shopping, I wrote a little, you know, blurb about that and what we did. And so, like I said, this is just mainly memory keeping at the moment so I can look back on our wedding planning experience and have that all kind of recorded in one place. Once we do start to do a little more um, kind of bulky planning, I do plan on bringing this to meetings with vendors and such and bringing this with me on the go and having it as a place to kind of um, either, you know, book appointments. If I make an appointment while I'm out, I can jot it in here so I don't forget or write down notes during a meeting or something like that um but yeah so that's kind of what i'm thinking about what this planner will be used for what i'm using it for now and yeah that's it for this planner and then i have this huge planner <laughs> um if you watched my engagement announcement video i shared that my parents got me this wedding planner as an engagement present and um, I've been absolutely loving it. It is chock full of information and all sorts of worksheets and lists and just everything you need to know to plan your wedding. So I'm not gonna do a complete walkthrough of this planner because to be honest, I mean, it's huge. I would literally have to walk you through like every single page to show you what's in here and that's just not practical, especially for this video. If you would like a closer look at kind of um, what is included in this planner, let me know in the comments below and I can, you know, kind of plan a video walking you through the basics of what this planner comes with. And yeah, I'll get that filmed for you if it's something you're interested in. So let me know. But other than that, this is kind of going to be my brain for wedding planning. It's where everything is going to be dumped from all my other planners, all the various, you know, sources and everything into here for you know actual decision making you know so like a step beyond just pinterest once we actually start meeting with vendors and picking out you know like a photographer and venue and like making a guest list and you know everything that goes into a wedding it will all be in here and i'm really excited to get started using it for real and so yeah so this will be my main wedding planner and that actually finally finishes up my complete planner system for 2016 kind of foundation um, like I said, I do plan on kind of building it as I go throughout the year and tweaking things, especially my business planners and, you know, adding in what I feel I need that none of my planners are giving me now and kind of taking away things that I don't actually need and just kind of tweaking until I find planner peace. Um, I'm a person that I do really like, um, switching up my planning system and changing things to make them constantly better. I don't ever think that I will have a completely permanent static planner system because I love evolving and I love 
changing in and out different planners, different, you know, style of planners like coil bound or a binder or um, hard bound. And so, I don't know, I really enjoy the process of always changing my planners. And like I said throughout the video, if I do make any major changes and once I update a lot of my planners and you know get my Kiki K set up, update my business planners, I will definitely make videos for you guys and kind of update you on how my system is going and just keep you in the loop. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching my planner system. I hope you enjoyed getting a look at it. If you're in the mood for more planner videos, I have actually started a planners playlist for my channel. So I will link that in the description box below. And I think I can also include it in a card. So it'll be there if I can. But other than that, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed and are looking forward to more planner videos. I know I'm excited to film them all for you. <laughs> And let me know in the comments um, what your planner system for the new year is. I would love to hear about it. Like I said, I'm always looking for ways to improve my planner system. And so I would love to hear if you have any tips or ideas or suggestions about what works for you and you think might work for me. And I think that's it. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.